In this video, I'm going to take a look at subgame perfect equilibrium in a particular game called Centipede Game. We're going to look at a reduced version of this and uh, see what it means to have a subgame and how we can refine the concept of Nash equilibrium. So, this is a, a reduced version of the Centipede Game. Two players play sequentially, and at every stage, each player can choose to take or pass. And if they take, the game ends. Now, if both players continuously pass, they each get a utility of four. However, if it's at every stage, it's in that particular player's advantage to take because they'll gain a little bit more. So, for example, if player one takes, they get two zero. However, if they let it go to player two and uh, player two takes, player one would only get one and player two would get three. So, you can solve this game using backwards induction by. Uh, looking at what happens at the very end. So at the very end, by assuming sequential rationality, we know that player two is comparing five and four, so player two will take. So this game reduces to this. Player one is then comparing four and three, so player one will take. And so we can replace the value of that node with the value when player one takes. Player two is in comparing three and two, so player two will take. And so player one will also in this uh, latest instance, take because 2 is bigger than 1. So we could say that the Nash equilibrium for this game is for both players to take at both uh, stages. And so we see here in this game, our equilibria is a vector indexed by the information sets of our players. So we see that this is simply the index of the first information set of player 1, and this t is the information set for the second index of player 1. But in fact, this, this isn't quite the equilibria, the only equilibria, there are, there are four equilibria. As long as everyone always takes whenever they have an opportunity to, um, then we'll have a uh, Nash equilibria. And uh, it doesn't really matter what happens at that second node, as long as the first player takes. Another way to see this is to draw up the strategies for all our players. We see that player one and player two have the same strategy set, which is they can either pass at both their nodes, pass at the first and take at the second, take at the first, pass in the second, or take at both. Okay? And so if you were to come to this game, you have to write down what you're going to do depending on where you got to. You could say, well, I'm going to take at my first information set, and then I'm going to pass at my second. Obviously, that means that the second thing will never happen, but we could still say, what would you do if you needed to make a decision at that information set? Once we've done this, we can write down our game in normal form, and these we can use various tools to analyze them. For example, we could say, all right, if we know that player one is passing and passing, what's the best thing for player two to do? Well, it's actually to pass first and then take, because they'll get a utility of five. So five is the best response for player two, sorry, pass take is the best response for player two if player one is gonna pass pass. And here I've underlined all the best responses, and what we see here in this bottom right corner is four pairs of best responses. And so these are the four Nash equilibria we discussed earlier, which can simply be written as TT, TT, TP, TT, TT, TP, TP, and TP, TP. Okay, which basically all end with the same result, but no one has an incentive to move from any of these. Now, Let's take a look at these equilibria when we look at the subgames. So what this node here, where player two starts, is a subgame of the overall game. So it's a game within the game. So if we ignored this and we started here, we could do the same things. Now player one only has P and T as their strategy sets. I'm putting a little underscore there to remind us that this is ignoring what they do at their first information set. And player two is the same set of strategies. Once we've done this, our game looks like this. Um, it's actually the first two rows of the previous game. And we can simply write down uh, the best responses once again. And so now we have two Nash equilibria. So this is where player one um, takes, and player one takes and passes, and takes and takes. Which is what we've got there. Now, if we look at our original equilibria for the entire game, we see that only two of the original equilibria actually give us, prescribe us equilibria for this first subgame. So what we're beginning to do is say, okay, all these equilibria are not equal. Not all these equilibria also tell us equilibria behavior in our subgames. And so we're getting rid of TPTT 
and TPTT and TPTP. If we then look at the second subgame, so the second game within a game, we see our players have the following uh, strategy sets. This is our game. This game is very, very easy to uh, analyze. We get that this, these bottom two strategies are simply our, our best responses. And so Nash Equilibrier is uh, the first player must take and the second player can do whatever they want because that puts us in this last row. And again, we see that the same two equilibria in our original equilibria uh, give us this strategy set. So we're, we're kind of, we haven't refined any further. Now, if we look at the last subgame, which is this single player game, which has this strategy set and this very simple normal form representation, we see that in this instance, the Nash equilibria is when the second player takes. And so we have um, a Nash equilibrium uh, that is just to take, which now allows us to remove yet another one of the original Nash equilibria. And, and so um, we have that the only equilibria of the overall game that is also an equilibria for every single subgame is for all players at all times to take. And this is what is called a subgame perfect equilibria. So it's a, as you see, it's a stronger um, notion of equilibria than just pure Nash equilibrium because it, it, it ensures that not only will you be acting at equilibria for the whole game but you will be acting at equilibria for all parts of um, for every single sub game.